Greetings and welcome once again to the Gaming Codex, a show right where we explain to you all the many words and terms used to describe video games and the video games industry, and today's term is that of feature creep. And what exactly would that be? Well, according to the general definition, feature creep or creeping featureism or featureism is the ongoing expansion or addition of new features in a product, especially in computer software and consumer and business electronics. These features go beyond the basic function of the product and can result in software bloat and overcomplication rather than simple design. Feature creep tends to show up way before the product is actually released. And it's actually one of the main reasons why some products tend to not be released, especially when it comes to video games. What happens is that the developer starts out with an idea of what the game should be. The basic form of it is conceptualized. And then onto that there are added other ideas of what the game can do, what the game can be, what the player can do within the game. And those extra features should just keep piling on. Usually there's somebody, a producer, that says, okay, we stop here so that the game stays within the limits of the development budget and the development time allotted for the project. Otherwise, it will get delayed, it will get more expensive, it will get pushed back, it will get more expensive, and eventually it will get cancelled. Or, and I can't say that this would be a worse fate, it can get thrown out under market before it's actually done, because developing all those extra features sometimes tends to take out of the uh, time needed to develop the basic parts of the game, meaning that those do not actually work as they're supposed to. For example, the technological side may not work the way it's supposed to, so the game doesn't really work all that well. Now what is the popular definition of feature creep? Well, there are kind of two of them. One would be, what do you mean you won't have competitive battle mobile royale in this city builder? You should add it and you're adding more content to the game, clearly it's never going to be finished. The gaming community at large and the industry have a troubled relationship with feature creep. On the one hand, people want games to be bigger, broader, more complicated, have more stuff in them. After all, if a game does offer you more stuff to do in more interesting ways, what could be bad about it? And truth be told, if it actually is done correctly, there is nothing bad about it. But there is a limit beyond which adding more features to a game will just make it harder to actually complete or make it incoherent, harder to balance, harder to actually find what's enjoyable about it, it models the essence of it. And on the other hand, there are people who will blow even in yogurt, as the uh, old saying goes, meaning that if they see an announcement for a game in development adding a new feature or adding something, then they will see that as feature creep and say, oh, the game's never gonna be done, it's all a scam, never buy it. Not saying the people are wrong, they have that assumption because sometime in the past they have seen that simply torpedo a game and kill it. Most Kickstarter games are evidence of that, a lot of them did get feature creep to hell and back with uh, stretch goals and either those stretch goals never came out, the entire project was cancelled, or what did come out turned out to be uh, very very uh, in the sense that it's uh, probably would have been better to focus on a smaller game than what you tried to make and failed, but at least you tried. This can also be a problem for games that require all those features to actually be fun. For example, Space Space the F9. With the features promised when it was launched in early access, it sounded like it could be a fantastic management game, a really fun one that you could really enjoy yourself with for a long, long time. What what was actually launched before the game was cancelled due to it being, uh, well, uh, developed by basically one person and that person being fired, even though the game made back its investment and still not having sold enough units before it was launched. In cases like that, the feature the extra features would have helped. Not sure how much since it was so mismanaged, but hey, I'm not gonna get into Double Fine's management on this show. So what would be the marketing definition of feature creep? Well, that is, look, it's our E3 trailer that's got actual gameplay in it. Promise. Overpromising is quite common in video games. The industry is basically built on it. Careers have been built upon it. And under-delivering is par for the course. Many games were announced, were sold even with the promise of them containing something, and at one point, yeah, that thing was gonna be in there. It was a feature that may have actually crept up over the base design that eventually sort of needed to get cut for the actual game to be finished, though sometimes that feature was the only good part of the game and was obviously a part of the core idea of it, but it 
got cut because the game is in the hands of a company that does not understand what it's making, just that it should be selling better than it is. As the video game industry has matured over the course of the decades, feature creep has become less of an issue in uh, big companies, or at least in companies that are run or at least hire people that have experience in the industry. People that have been in charge of projects before or have participated in projects that featured or feature creep at some point and know the signs of it, know when to stop, know when to cut and just work on what's already there. Some companies actually take this a bit to an extreme, where they just work on a simple core concept and release it as a cheap game. This is what Paradox does. They release games that are under the price of what you would find most, you know, commercial games at. They're not 60 bucks, none of them are. And they do have an enjoyable core gameplay. And on top of that, when they actually have time to focus on each feature individually, they will add more features. That's not feature creep, that's feature stacking, I guess, and it works better because the game's already done. It's functional, it works, you're just adding more stuff to it to make it even better as DLC. And you'll end up paying a thousand bucks to play it all. Well, not a thousand bucks, they haven't gotten to that level yet, I believe. Though I think Crusader Kings 2 may be close. Though again, that's not feature creep per se. It's a way to avoid it. Others avoid it just by lying to you about what the game will actually contain and then complaining that people are calling them out on their lies. Which again is not feature creep, it's just Gearbox or Peter Molyneux. So closes this edition of the Gaming Codex. Come back next week when we will talk about a brand new subject. Goodbye.